How's it going, everyone? Get comfortable in my seat here. Guess we're doing Pokemon Yellow again. Except, uh... This one's a little bit different. <clears throat> Got my coffee ready. This version of Pokemon Yellow is special, and it just came out, like, today. At the time of recording this. As you can see on the title screen, it says Pokemon Yellow Legacy. This is a ROM hack created by Smith Plays Pokemon on YouTube and their team of uh, hacking people, various artists, programmers, and all that came together to basically fix Gen 1. I already have a save data here, but I'm gonna start a new game so that- Oops, wrong button. Okay. Uh, yeah, everything's good, everything's good here. Immediately, we got a normal and a hard mode. I'll go with normal. Oh, by the way, stick around. Because I have something else I want to show you regarding this game. Classic Pokemon, I guess. Uh, you can be a boy or a girl. You can be green, actually. So, let's pick the girl, just because we can. And it's a brand new feature. Hello there! Welcome to the world of Pokemon! My name is Oak. People call me the Pokemon Professor. This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. Yeah, 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 we, we've all, we've all. If you played Gen 1, you already know this part. There she is. There's Green. Her name is Green right there. But I'm gonna name her something different. I'm gonna name her something a little more personal. Let me adjust my microphone here. If you hear some weird noises, I apologize. But, we're gonna name her... Athena. Mm. It's for a very special someone. Whenever I have a female character, whenever a character creator lets me make a female character, I name her Athena after someone very special in my life. Who, uh, is a huge, like, Greek mythology buff. And I'll love her to death. But anyway. He's been your rival since you were a baby. Uh, what was his name again? I'll tell you his name. There. That's right. I remember now. His name is Owlspace. So, yeah, I started a little bit of a save data, just to kind of test it out. I did a bit of a test video also, it didn't turn out the way that I wanted, but here, here we go with this, Athena's playing the, NE, the SNES. First of all, run button, just hold B, and she run. I will link... I will put a link in the description to this, to the video that uh, Smith Plays Pokemon made, so that you can see all of the changes, and even some spoilers if you want. I watched the whole thing, and uh, let's just say this really is like the definitive Gen 1 Pokemon experience. It's seeming like it anyway. Don't go out. <clears throat> you know, everything happens as normal. As usual. Oh, catches the Pikachu.
Yep. You see the little bar. Well, that, that, that actually, uh... That brings up something that I wanted to talk about briefly, is, uh... If you've seen my other video of, like, the epilogue playback... ...thing that I have that lets me play... Uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges directly from the cartridge onto my computer. Which is awesome, but it has another feature that I think I briefly mentioned was that you can take a rewritable cartridge, which are honestly super easy to find. I got mine from like AliExpress for like four bucks. They come preloaded with games, you just... If you see a version of, like, uh, Pokemon Green or, uh, Link's Awakening, and it's, like, four bucks on AliExpress or something like that, um, chances are it's a rewritable cartridge. So, what I did was I dumped the ROM of my actual Pokemon Yellow, Patched it with the patch, and then rewrote it to this cartridge. It's... it's ridiculous. And the reason why I did that is because I don't really plan on doing an entire playthrough in this video, or as a video series of this. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know, but I also wanted to play it like on my actual hardware. And I wanted to test something. For what I have in my living room is a Nintendo 64, a copy of Pokemon Stadium 1, and the transfer pack. And I tested it very briefly. And... The results are interesting when it comes to this cartridge. It was giving me a little bit of trouble at first. I figured maybe that it was like some sort of anti-piracy. But uh, after a little bit of fiddling around with it, because it is kind of old, I got it to work. And to prove it, at the end of this video, I'll have a little snippet. Showing you everything I've done in this. And showing you what Pokemon Stadium does with it. Also, I'm not going to name my Pikachu just yet. But if you're watching this and you have like an idea for a name for any Pokemon that I catch. Feel free. Feel free to let me know. Name my Pikachu. Name whatever Pokemon I get. I don't mind. Comments help the YouTube algorithm. So, I would really appreciate it if you did that. Thank you. Anyway. Alright, there's another thing. The back-facing sprites have been uh, altered. They've been updated. It's interesting that there's still lower pixel resolution than everything else in the game. I wonder if that's just like a limitation of Gen 1's engine. But still, like almost every single Pokemon has been redone with their back sprite. Omitting a few Pokemon that don't really need it. Yeah, we're not playing that game. I'm not letting this stupid Eevee beat me. It's stupid because it's ass faces. Look at that. That's the experience bar from Gold and Silver. Much, much needed improvement.
I tried to do this video like much earlier, like way earlier in the morning. But uh, I was quite tired. I was not awake enough. I am now though. How you doing? Yeah, me too. I'm trying. Just meh. And gonna grind a little bit here. Just because it's helpful. I like to get my Pikachu to like level 9 or 10 and then catch my first Pokemon. Look at that. That's amazing. Got the run button. We're, we're already... Leagues above vanilla. Vanilla Pokemon Yellow. We are leagues above it. And what's more. Is apparently. It's not, not anything new for ROM hacks. But it's still pretty cool. Because what they did was they added. Uh, the ability to catch or evolve. Every single Pokemon right from this without having to do any link cable stuff. I mean, on the one hand, the link cable stuff is kind of part of what made it fun in the first place, but... Who the hell's got a Game Boy and a link cable these days? You can use an emulator, sure. There are plenty of emulators that let you load up two games at once and then do the trading and the battling and all that. Which is pretty neat. Ah! Popping my neck here. Just killing some Pidgeys. I love Pidgey because, like, Pokemon is full of all these fantastical creatures. Freaking fire breathing dragon, giant blue turtle with freaking cannons, shoulder mounted cannons that shoot water, freaking humanoid psychic creatures, and, and then bird. <laughs> Just bird. Are you happy yet? Yeah, Pikachu's happy. But he usually has a different response depending on what you do. You can also teach this Pikachu uh, surf and fly, apparently. So, like, those were bonuses that you could only get by playing, like, Pokemon Stadium or using a game shark yes I think that nurse joy actually does that whole spiel once and then from now on yep yeah, look at that you don't have to mash a to heal your Pokemon anymore you just talk to her and it's done You know, I'm curious, if you have a run button in this one... Would the bike be faster, or is it just something to have at this point? And I get Oak's Parcel. Talk to the hungover old man.
He hasn't had his coffee yet. Because he's hungover. If you don't know, that's like the actual, like, Japanese version of Pokemon Red, Green, Blue, and Yellow. Is he's hungover. And then after he has his coffee, he's perfectly fine. I, I just think that's funny. Obviously, that wouldn't fly here in the West. Are you happy? He's happy. Let's deliver Oak's parcel, and... Get the Pokedexes. Or, you get just one. Ass Phase gets the other. I hope you like my border, by the way. I did that myself. It's the, uh... Super Game Boy... Pokemon Yellow border. But... You know, I went in A-Sprite. A-Sprite is a pixel art tool, if you don't know. And I went in A-Sprite, and I did my own thing with it. And I kind of like the whole paint splatter aesthetic. Which, I guess is like part of my brand, the whole rabid guinea pig thing that I'm doing. I think I explained this before, but I just came up with that one day, like in high school, and it stuck. And I've used that for like everything, every online thing ever since. Either rabid guinea pig, rabid media, if I'm like creating something, or just rabid if... There's only so many characters to put in a thing. Rattata. What should my first Pokemon be in this? Whenever I play Gen 1 or Gen 2, what I usually like to do is kind of slowly build my party. So I kind of pick and choose who I want from just about each re uh, region. And it's paced out in a way so that usually by the time I get to Lavender Town, I have a full party. That is so nice. Let's get some Pokeballs. Start catching stuff. I'll figure out which ones I want to keep after a little while, but I want to start collecting them. Because like I said, you should be able to catch them all. There are a few that are purposefully tricky. And I was thinking, I was thinking I was going to do the Mew glitch, but, uh, this ROM hack's got you covered. Let's just say that. We'll go with just five for now. Five potions. Uh, don't need too many antidotes, I'll get two. I don't think there's anything in this particular area that can paralyze you. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just gonna go with it. What's up, old man? <laughs> mm. I, I know how to catch Pokemon. He's a good old dude. 
It's just an alcoholic. It's fine. We all got our problems. Shoot! It was so close to... That didn't work. I may be losing my touch. Maybe that was just a strong Pokemon. Apparently, if you hold start while pressing A on stats, you can check to see a Pokemon's growth potential. I've run out of Pokeballs, too. I have to get some at the Pokemon Mart. Now, what he's referring to there, if you look at stats here, that's like his actual uh, attack, defense, speed special there. Those are the levels. Or, that's his level. Those are the moves he has currently. If I hold start and hit A, I get... Hmm. Uh, yeah, so... I, I'm I'm no, like, Pokemon expert. I don't know all the metas and all that shit, but I'm pretty sure this is, like, more or less, like, the rate of which these stats grow. And I think if you hold select and hit A there, I think that's, I think that's the max. I think that that's what happens when you get to level 100 with this Pikachu. Specifically. So, that's a really neat feature. Uh, I'm gonna go this way. What's up, dude? I do. Anytime, anywhere. What, are you trying to sell me Nintendo Switch games? Now you can experience this adventure anytime, anywhere. Mankey's usually a good choice. If you're watching a... Uh, put the friggin' AOL sound down. If you're watching any Nintendo Directs, take a shot whenever they, uh, say something along the lines of, you can play anytime, anywhere, and, uh, you will die. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I already have you. Look, it even has a little Pokeball icon there saying I already have one. That's super useful. A lot of extra features from Gen 2 have been thrown in here. Thunderwave, that one's useful sometimes. As a kid, I was like, why? What the heck is a status effect? I just want to hurt the other person. That is so quick. That is nice. Uh, and the icons got their own unique Pokemon icons. So I don't know how many other people currently have this on a physical cartridge. I'd imagine I'm not the only one. Damn. 
I guess they didn't really change Mankey that much. I'm keeping him, screw it. Usually, when I play Pokemon Yellow, or Gen 1 in general, I tend to accidentally have, like, a set roster. But this time, I'm gonna switch it up a little. Volpix. Volpix right in this grass right here. They said that uh, they added a few more types to the beginning area so that you can better uh, build your party that isn't just like Rattatas and Pidgeys. I just remembered there's another feature, but I can't do it here. Stay in there. Good. Good. And I can just zoom right down back to the Pokemon Center. I think that they, uh, updated the AI of, like, other trainers and, like, the gym leaders and all that so that they don't just use, like, Tail Whip over and over again. Hmm. Rattata is usually pretty good. They're super common, but... You get a Rattata leveled up, you get a Raticate, and man, that thing can get overpowered as hell. You get Hyper Fang, like it's over. Okay, so I've collected a few Pokemon now. Here's another feature. If I go here, you get all the usuals. This is where Rattatas usually show up. It's just... The noise it makes. Wait, hold on. Yeah. And then this... Is the level up moves. The game tells you straight up what level and what moves this Rotata is going to learn. At 14, it learns Hyper Fang. 28, it learns Super Fang. And then these are the TMs and HMs it can learn. That is so cool. And one thing I like about normal types is they can also learn... A good portion of normal types can learn, like, extra elemental abilities. So, you can have, like, a Rattata that has, a like, Blizzard and Thunder, so that it's ready for any situation. Which, I usually try and do stuff like that in this game. They all got their individual icons instead of the generic ones. 
I mean, the people who worked on this, they, they went out of their way. Most certainly. They did say they basically wanted to make like the definitive Pokemon Yellow, the definitive Pokemon Gen 1 experience, and from what I've seen, I think they did it. Because honestly, you know, Gen 1 is a little hard to go back to. Will you quit sand attacking? I swear, that's one of the most annoying moves in this game. I, I think I'm gonna stick with Mankey for now. That way I have my Pikachu, I have my Mankey, and I can level them both up together. And, you know, that's my strategy. I like to keep all my Pokemon in my party, like... Around the same level. Some might venture off and get more powerful than the rest briefly. And just because I'm uh, putting them in the box now doesn't mean they're going to stay there necessarily. I might decide I want them, eventually. Maybe I want to take some time to grind and make them evolve. Uh, we got... Pikachu or Mankey, let's go. Ugh, well... Cool, we're broke now. Uh, let's level up Pikachu and Mankey. Actually, I think it'd be easier in the forest where it's like... Caterpies and Weedles. I could also go with Nidoran. I do believe Nidoran learns moves that are effective against rock types, so... I forget which one, actually, because... the female and the male have different attacks. And one of them gets, like, low kick, and the other one gets, like horn attack or something I'm not sure more Vulpix I already got you that means we can kill you indiscriminately and get your experience points I think, I think most of the best features in this ROM hack are post-game content. You know, after you beat the Elite Four in the original game, you more or less have nothing else to do but, like, catch Mewtwo and try and get the rest of the Pokémon. They mention that in the video. Link in the description. Alright, look, we're done catching for now. 
Come on, Pikachu! Um, yeah, they did a whole lot of, uh, rebalancing. Because, as you may or may not know, Gen 1 is fucking broken. Here we go, you can take on that, right? So that you can get stronger... There you go. It seems like maybe Caterpies and Weedles now show up at around the same rate in the forest here. You done poisoned me. You done infected me with the PlayStation Network. And we all know how easy to infect that thing is. I, I don't I don't want to talk about the Helldivers thing. I am aware of it. Sony done fucked up. They had a good thing and they done fucked up. In the name of greed. But, like, who does that actually benefit? I'm talking about it. I said I didn't want to talk about it, but I'm talking about it. Who does that actually benefit? If you don't know, Helldivers 2 is a game that came out not too long ago, and people freaking love it. I don't have it personally. I haven't played it yet, but it looks awesome. But apparently, what they decided to do... For people who already own the game on Steam, was now you have to have a PlayStation Network account. Let that sink in. You need a PlayStation account to play a PC game. And if you don't if you decide not to, well, you're shit out of luck. So people are either forced to get a PlayStation Network account just for that. Or they just don't play the game. And again, I ask, who does that benefit? Why would they do that? Why do rich corporate executives think that shit like that is a good idea? No, 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 no. Oh, that was a critical hit anyway. Die. <laughs> we see it all the freaking time. It's not just the, uh... Interrupt for a second to show you this. The town map is up top. Okay. Yeah, an auto-sort feature. Anyway, uh, back to my rambling. Friggin... This big triple-A... Uh, developers not the actual people working on the games the artists the programmers and all that the big wigs up top the ones who make all the dumb decisions and uh, 
it's not just video games either. Something is up. Something is wrong with capitalism right now. I mean, it's been wrong, but I think that we're living right now in a time where the ramifications of poor, short-sighted decisions are starting to show their face. And it ain't pretty. It's not a pretty face. It's not like we didn't know it was coming either. But all I can say on the matter is I truly, truly hope that some sort of breakthrough is over the horizon. Because otherwise, this quote-unquote great nation of America, the old United States, is fucked. Speaking of fucked... How dare you poison me twice? Take this. I just wonder if the Mew glitch still works in this one now. Crap, now my manky's gonna pass out. Yep. There he goes. Ugh. I'm sorry if you don't like that sound. It's just it's force of habit. My neck gets stiff and I have to I have to pop it. Back to the forest. Alright, but look. I'm gonna save right here. And what I'm gonna do... Is I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move over... To the Nintendo 64. And... I'm going to show you everything... That I just did... Being seen by Pokemon Stadium. So... Sit tight. Alright, welcome back. Got us pointing at the yield CRT here. Nintendo 64. Pokemon Stadium. Classic controller. Ah! Transfer pack. And what I have here... This is my actual original copy of Pokemon Yellow. I hope this looks alright. Let me see. Yeah, you can see that just fine. Oh, I bet this is hitting you right in the nostalgia. Smack dab in the nostalgia. Alright, well, as you can see, it loads it up. This is the same Pokemon Yellow that I was playing. You go to Professor Oak's lab, stick the cartridge in, and you can look at things. Here's my party, my box, all that happy fun stuff. Uh, move Pokemon. See list? What, what am I trying to do here? Party. Yeah. 
and you can look at your Pokemon like this. But, you know, we're not here for that. We're not here for that. Because this right here is uh, the rewritable cartridge I was talking about, of which I was just playing the ROM hack on a minute ago. You gotta blow in the cartridge, it's tradition. Well, it's not giving any errors so far. Athena. Can you see that? Can you read it? Yeah, you can. It wasn't saved at a Pokemon Center. But I can still go to Professor Oak's research lab. Load it up. Again, still! It's all here. Just in case you think I'm bullshitting you. And I can look at my Pokedex. My ID is apparently 0000000. There's the Pidgey, Rattata, Pikachu, obviously, Nidoran, Vulpix, Oddish, Mankey. It's all there. Now, unfortunately, I tried to do this. If I go to the Game Boy Tower and try and play it like this. Well, that happens. But still, the potential for this is amazing because this means that I can use my actual Pokemon from this cartridge and do all the Pokemon Stadium stuff with it. I bet the creators of this ROM hack didn't even know that. They didn't even account for it. But I'm a curious guy and I have to check. Now, if you'll excuse me, um, I'm going to go save at a Pokemon Center real quick so that I can check some other things. I, I, I will cut this part out, but I'll just... Lovely old TV, isn't it? Lovely old thing. This... Is my personal Game Boy Advance with a modded backlit screen taken directly out of a Game Boy Advance SP? And yeah, it's seen better days. <sighs> Hopefully, I'll be able to. No, no, no. Well, hold on. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. It's in, it's working. It's the same one. Athena, we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave here. I want to see if it even knows. Like, at this point, this is a mad science experiment of mine. And there we go. All right. Let's angle this a little better again. Maybe, hopefully. Crap. Here we go again. You're shitting me. Huh. <laughs> Still. So, I can't really do, like, all of the transfer stuff. It won't let me. I can't organize, use my PC or whatever, which is a cool feature of Pokemon Stadium. Can't trade. That is such a dumb... That is such a dumb restriction. But, we're going to do a bit of a free battle here. 
We're gonna go easy because Let's see. Look at that. Same Mankey. Same Pikachu. Same Oddish. There's the rest of them. We're learning together. We are learning together at this point. There is no way. They're all level 50. There's no way. But you know what, though? Now that we know that this is possible, there's going to be a part two to this where I will be much further in the game and I will have plenty more Pokemon to experiment with. So, until that time, I hope you look forward to it because I certainly do. This is exciting. This is fun. But, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, you know, icons and all, all that jazz. But anyway, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys soon. Bye bye.